Our next speaker, Dr. Sanjay Chaudhary, who's the founder and director of the I-7 uh, Chaudhary Eye Center. He's a leading cataract uh, and refractive surgeon and uh, very much in the forefront when it comes to surgical and technological innovations in eye care. And he's just the right person to tell us about faking intraocular lenses in corneal ectasia. On to you, Dr. Sanjay. Thank you, Dr. Chitra. So my role comes in after the corneal people have done their job for ectasias. Now, as a first procedure or a second procedure or a third procedure, comes the role of faking intraocular lenses. And why they prefer to send them to me in some situations is because they want somebody who has a lot of experience with faking IULs and who can deliver very precise access for placements. So when I talk about fake IULs, I would say the requirements would be that the lens should be such that it can correct very high myopes at time, even up to 24 diopters, can correct very high cylinders at time, even 10, 11, 12. So the, the lens has to be customizable and easily available there should not be an extraordinary waiting time. By default, I use the star ICLs, but the star ICLs have a limit. They are limited that the maximum myopia manufactured uh, corrector correction manufactured is 18, which corrects a myopia of 17.5. And the maximum cylinder which is manufactured on their lenses is six which gets a, a cylinder of about five. And if there is a combination, then if I'm using a six cylinder, my myopia correcting ability would go down by six. That means I would be correcting 12 of, of uh, spherical myopia to keep my six cylinder active. So I need a lens which has greater flexibility, more range. So many a times I use the biotech fake IOL. With this, I can go up to 25, 26 of myopia. I have used just recently about a week back, a cylinder of 11. And the lens was made available to me in just five days time. So it's a big advantage to have both these lenses in your armamentarium. And the second thing which is very important is when you're dealing with such high access, you have to be bang on accuracy when you place the ICL or the any fake IUL in the eye. So because in most of these situations or in many of these situations, the cylinders are very high. And even if there's a 10 degree variation, then there would be a loss of 10% or oh sorry, it should be a loss of 30% of the cylinder effect. So uh, I stand corrected here, read this as 30%. So if the, if the situation is that there is a nine cylinder which needs to be corrected, it will lose three cylinder value if there is a variation in the axis which is off by 10 degrees and that becomes very significant. So how can we overcome this? So we need a system which is a little beyond a manual bubble marker system or a slit lamp system and this would be a digital access marker system like the Varion. And we find it very useful and really accurate at times. However, there is a negative side to it that in such high cylinders, many a time the Varion data is not captured and we again have to depend on the manual system. And if it is a manual system, I would rather prefer the slit lamp marking system to the bubble marking system. So let's uh, understand a little bit. So here, 
purposely I'm showing you a lens which is a biotech lens and I've already marked the axis with the digital axis marker and made a similar marking on the cornea. Inserting the lens is routine once you've done a few of them. Bring the lens onto the right axis. Tuck in the haptics. Check that the lens is on axis. And probably in four minutes, the whole procedure is done. I insert these lenses under hydro. I don't use visco because the visco gets trapped under the phacic IOL and it has two effects. One, it could cause a secondary rise of IOP and number two, it could cause slippage or rotation of the lens. So hydro ins insertions are my favorite and I do hydro insertions as a routine for all my phacic IOLs. Now, coming to whatever we have talked since the morning, I will deal with it in a synopsis. So, when we are implanting a fake it IOL, we have three categories of procedures. The first one-step procedure, a two-step procedure, and a three-step procedure. My preceding cornea specialists have already talked a lot about it, but just a, a brief review of how it leads to the fake it IOL. So, the first step procedure is that the person has a stable keratoconus and we need to correct it with the fake IOL. The second step procedure is we are doing two things. We could either do a collagen cross-linking, wait for a few months, let things stabilize, let the cylinder stabilize. And we see many a times the cylinder comes down by a diopter or two and then do a fake IOL or we are doing an intracorneal ring segments. And then we can do a fake IOL almost immediately. Or the three-step procedure is we are doing two things. A intracorneal ring segment with the collagen cross-linking, wait for six to nine months, and then a fake IOL. Or a TCAT with the cross-linking, and then we do a fake IL hours after six to nine months. So just giving you a few case reviews. Uh, in the case one, one stage procedure, this gentleman in the left eye had a vision of 618 and had a high cylinder of 3.5, but it was stable for quite some time. And these were his, the pentacams before. You can see the little eccentricity here and the data showing some early keratoconus. And we did a toric ICL on this date, 15, 10, 20, 20. The vision was 6, 6. The patient was extremely happy. A simple situation. The drawbacks of a fake IUL are that it only corrects the spherical and the cylindrical errors it has no effect on the higher order abrasions and which are quite a few in keratoconus. So if you have to look at this, you may have to look at a two-stage procedure. These are some references which show that these techniques are very popular. It has been practiced by so many people. So we come to the two-stage procedure. That means we before we do the fake IOL, we do an additional, either a collagen cross-linking to stabilize the cornea, wait for six months, and then do a fake IOL. Or we can do an in, intra uh, corneal ring segments like the intax, and probably immediately follow up with a fake IOL. The, the advantage of intax is that you can almost uh, reduce the myopia by its thickness, pull the eccentricity of the cone more towards the center, more towards the visual axis. And so you get better outcomes with a fake IOS. Now here's an example of a patient who had a, a right eye diagnosed of keratoconus, sorry. And you can see the right eye uh, pentacam shows the 
typical features and Berlin Ambrosio is highlighting those features here. You have one minute. Second. One minute? Okay. So we uh, went on to do the treatment of CXL and then followed it up with uh, the usual fake IOL. And in stage three, we used all the three procedures. And I'll just show you, see the, the pentacam values here. And uh, after doing a TCAT and a C3R, look at this, the balance of the front surface is all green and the cone is so well centralized and become regular. And the results were exceptionally good after a toric IOL. And in an intrastromal segment, intracorneal segment, and with a, a CXL, and with the fake IOL, you can see this picture here. This, this case was just done about a month back. The results were very good. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Sanjay, I want, uh, that was a wonderful talk. I wanted this very important question. We are talking of fake IOLs in character corners. So yeah. the lens sizing can be a challenge in these eyes. Uh, sure. so have you had a situation where you needed to do a lens exchange because of the inappropriate sizing? And if you, or rarely if you've had a high vault, you felt because the center of flow is there, would you rather wait and watch? See, the sizing is always an issue because you have an excellent interior chamber depth. But that depth is confined to the center, not to the periphery. So when we are putting in a ICL or any fake IUL, we have to consider the peripheral part for our fittings. So we should not be led by that you have an ACD of 4 and 4.5 and you choose a higher size. Yes. You could land up with a problem. So your white to white calculations and your dependence on white to white calculations and the ACD by, by during gonioscopy, you come see whatever the situation is and then accordingly choose a lens. These days with the center of flow, it is not a problem if you have a shallow vault. Even a vault of 50 to 100 microns is good enough and you don't get a denticular opacity for years and years and years. So don't be overzealous by choosing a size higher, which can cause peripheral touch and uh, cramming in the angles and cause secondary glaucoma. So this is very important when you determine the sizing in a, especially in the case of greater bonus. Thank you. Radhika, you have a question? Yeah, so I think you took the uh, you know, question that I wanted to ask you. That was a wonderful uh, talk. And I think very nicely from the PG's point of view, he has uh, you know, elucidated that uh, cross-linking has done to strengthen the cornea and TGPRK or uh, uh, intacts have to be done to uh, smoothen the cornea. And then for the refractive correction to go ahead and do the fake IOL that he has very nicely described. So the same question that Dr. Chitra asked that in these uh, hyper deep uh, anterior chambers, what is the stability of the lens that you implant? There are so many papers in literature which describe it. But I think you answered the question very nicely that, uh, you know, since the resting point is the periphery, the white to white diameter and the peripheral uh, depth is what really matters. And if you choose that correctly, then the central hyper deep chamber may not have an influence on the rotational stability of the IO. That's exactly what I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Yes. I, I see Dr. Rajesh Sina is not there yet. Uh, so um, I think uh, Anaga, are you still there? Could you call him up and check? <clears throat> because he has a very important topic to talk on. Uh, Meanwhile, I'd just like to put across one thing and that is, you know, uh, Sanjay so beautifully gave this talk. <laughs> Only sometimes what happens is you do an ICL and the patient still doesn't improve. Uh, and I think that is because it is very important. And I think this is what Dr. Ramamurthy has also taught us. Yeah. That if your spectacle corrected visual acuity is not improving with in a case of keratoconus, then it is unlikely that it is going to improve even with the ICL. Because they do have a lot of high expectations post ICL. Yes, and, you know, they think it is like ICL after myopia. So I think that need, that point needs to be, you know, factored in. And those patients are best left with a good contact lens yeah. and a good BCBA. Uh, then we do a fake IOL in these eyes. 
Yes, it is uh, a very that's valid. a very valid point that Dr. Namrata made. Probably the corneal yeah. contour is contributing more to the vision problems than the refractive error itself. So both surgery and patient will be disappointed. Thank you so much, Dr. Namrata.